on the hand side of things, just emphasize that nice, uh, nice technique on the hands. And that's just a close little uh, chip chop. That's what I called it with the Scottish uh, coach that I had, chip chop. Chip chop, chip chop, chip chop, chip chop. And you'd say that the whole time just for rhythm purposes. He's good, but. Um, so another piece, and this might be getting to a little bit of your older age brackets, again, working with the hands here, is how do we catch some of the high balls? How do we get, you know, working with some of the low balls? So on a high ball side of things, you know, there's a couple ways to deal with a high ball. I kind of say a rule of thumb, if I can have it here with my feet on the ground, it's catchable. You know, not a question, it's catchable. I don't even mess with punching or carrying it if my feet are on the ground. If I have to take a little bit of a hop, and for a youth player, a little bit of a hop, I still probably catch it. If I'm no longer hold on to it comfortably, standing on my very tippy toes, unless you got a basic and jump a lot, that's when we start considering doing the parry, punching away. Because now it's getting a little bit out of our grasp to get a nice comfortable catch with the W. So when we're going up in the air for a catch, you can just kind of work with this standing still with a ball. Throw it up, try to catch it at a high point. You don't have to have them jump quite yet, just get them used to catching it above their head with the W, and then instantaneously bring it down into the basket. Okay, because here's a point right here. I'm a little exposed right here. I can get hit pretty easily. Stomach, voice, here, everything else right around here. So I gotta be bringing it in so that way I can start to protect myself. We can also be bringing up a knee. This is for protection, but also, again, this is getting into your older age brackets here. Just take your knee, throw it up, feel what happens. You feel your toes coming up. What that's doing is when I bring my leg up here, it's bringing some natural body momentum. You just elevated your jump another inch and a half to two inches high. So when I'm going up for a kick, I come up here, it's gonna give me a little bit more lift a little bit more protection. Now if I was splitting gears and I was working with some higher wing keepers, when do I decide if it's a right foot or a left foot that comes up? Who's coming in on the opposite side? Would be, you know, who's coming in on the side? It's where the ball's, where the ball's coming from. Yeah, it's the same yep. If the ball's coming from, let's see, Kevin, give me a ball from this side up in the air. See what was happening? Where'd my body finish up? Where's the attack? Away. It's coming from here. So next, if I go with my left leg, go again. Where did I finish up? Cross right from where the cross is coming to. I'm coming into the cross a little bit rather than going away. Because when I start to fall away, that natural arc actually is taking me away from the play. So if I'm trying to time it just right, I gotta come forward and get a better chance because I'm also cutting off the angle of that shot a little bit. So you wanna face your you wanna make sure you're facing your shot. If all possible. Yeah. No, no, yep. No, no, Instead of, you know, a lot of times they'll start to fade back and fall back. And, you know, next thing you know, you're facing back here. I mean, that's that's kind of a more advanced level piece that I'm talking about there. But at the same time, 12 year olds, 13 year olds, they can get that pretty easily. I think what's going to happen a lot of times with the players, though, if this is their dominant foot, this is probably the one they're going to bring up just because it's a useful piece. You know, if they're left footer, which I'm sure you only have like one or two in the entire club. Hopefully you got more than that. <laughs> They'll come off of this side. But get them used to in training, get them used to trying both by just giving them basic, right, Peter? Yep. All that you gotta do to train this? Yep. Don't even let them leave their feet yet. Just give them an underhand toss. Okay. <laughs> yep. Sometimes you gotta move their feet. Because yeah, if you start to fall back, then you're just give them a little Okay, pop, referee question. So if I'm the head of the line, but technically, what if I, that's is that a goal? goal? That's a goal. Okay, that's so you're back here, I'll get to that next. So if you're that. here, this is probably a pretty good indicator that I better be tapping this. <laughs> because if I'm going to catch it, I'm probably going to fall right back into the Yeah, what if it was like, oh, and then they went like that? Then you got to hope that your linesman is all the way to the end. They're not going to be all the way to the end. The thing is, your 14-year-old line punch probably won't be all that again. A keeper can be on this side of the goal line and punch out as long as the ball doesn't cross. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the ball. You can be on the goal. It's not right. basketball. In a little bit, you're going to tell him. Yeah, you'll go in there. Exactly. Yep. Right. Yeah, we're, we're kind of just taking little baby steps.
steps here, but a good rule of thumb is if you start to hyperextend backwards a little bit, this is a really good indicator that I need to be tapping it behind the goal. Or turn tail in front because you're way out of position. The youth players are going to probably do that. It's the, they got chipped or something. You just have to hightail it as much as possible, see if they can get them to this phase. When they're first starting off, though, their natural reaction is going to be, oh my goodness. Necessarily bring it down, Ted. Come over here, please. You got a nice ball, Ted. It'll work nicely. Nice that way or so. If I bring it down too quickly, and it's now off, I can turn around and go back in and go. Sometimes, if I know I'm in a safe position, I'll come up. Have you ever played against me before? No. If you're in this position, you're not going to be hit. Yeah. So, because I'm usually, if I'm in a crowd like that, I call it keeper bowling. I get strikes. I'm knocking people. I got so much momentum coming up through. This is my ball. I get complete access to it. If I take out a guy and I come up with the ball, guess what? I'm not going to get called. So, on that situation, if I feel safe enough, though, I'm going to keep it up there for a second until I come in and I'll land over. 